Hi and welcome back. This is Saga Hunter with some watercolor info paper, watercolor paper information. And um, I will not be doing any swatches today. And uh, that is because I am kind of dear and cheap with my watercolor paper. Real watercolor paper is usually quite expensive. So that is why I don't feel like sitting here swatching and showing you guys um, how the precise differences is between one and another. I am currently working on getting some watercolor paper samples of different kinds and I'll start doing some, some projects with that later on in April. I hope very soon into April. But for now, I would just want to talk about how the differences in production and features and stuff is on and what it all means. So I have picked Saunders Waterford paper because that is my brand of choice. It is produced by St. Cuthbert's Mill in uh, England. And it is my, that is my choice. I know there's others who want to use arches which is another brand and others have other choices this is my brand of choice and i have this paper in the three surface uh, categories that you watercolor use paper usually come in so that makes sense i can't show you the texture of the paper i have tried with this camera but it's really difficult so you kind of have to trust me a little bit on this so when it comes to watercolor paper there is two materials that they're usually made of it's either made of either cellulose or cotton and then there's a mixture of different some papers that is used a mixture of the two Cellulose is usually made from wood or and it is ground up to what is called wood pulp. The good papers and the ones that is used for art is called is what is what is called acid free. I have here a cellulose based paper, the Langton from Dale and Rowney. I assume it is a cellulose paper because they haven't printed anything else on it. And you can see here at the where that water drop is a little green it says acid free and that is because they have removed a part of the wood that is called a, a, a chemical so to speak that's called lignin lignin is an acid and it reacts with light and oxygen over time where it goes more yellow you know this from old books when you open them up that the paper is gone yellow and that's the lignin that has been oxidized uh, over time and it goes even faster if it gets sunlight at the same time um and it you of course you don't want your art, art paper to to go yellow especially with watercolors which is translucent and if the paper is yellow then the the colors is changed will change too so you want the paper to stay white and that's why you they remove the the lignin from the paper um and then the other thing is cotton cotton stays nice and white uh or beige as it can be this is a hundred percent cotton paper and has natural color is, is kind of a little bit off-white a little bit cream colored you can get it extra white but then they have to bleach it a bit if you like one or the other is is kind of a matter of taste uh, cellulose paper is usually less expensive than the cotton and the mixture is kind of in between I think it's a personal matter if you like to paint on one or the other the the way the paper absorbs the the water and the paint 
is slightly different between the, the two types. Uh, the, the cotton paper has kind of a medium absorption of water so you you can spread your, your paint around but it dries fairly quickly so you don't have maybe a, a lot of time to, to spread it around but then it, it, it dries out smoothly and um, it holds on to the pigment very well so if you want to put another layer of paint over it's usually quite easy and the, the first layer doesn't move too much you can always soak it and make it move but it's it's fairly easy to do what's called glazing on, on cotton paper it's a little harder on cellulose paper it it absorbs the, the water quite quickly so it has you can actually see it here it has a tendency to, to maybe get a little dark around the edges of each layer and it can also be a little less smooth the, within the, the the surface the, the, the wash some people like this other hate it and stuff so that's part of the personal choice um, you have to work a little fast on cotton uh, on, on cellulose paper compared to cotton but if it's a good paper it doesn't really there's not that huge of a difference I think sometimes it also comes down a little bit to some snobbery because I use the expensive paper and um, I I would say some people would probably not really notice the difference um, but I, I like working on both and I kind of adjust to to the paper I, I work on so that's that then there is the paperweight something you often will hear about and over here in the corner is this mark and the paper I use no matter which kind of paper I use for watercoloring I always buy 300 GSM at the very least for drawing and other things I can go down and, and use lighter paper weights but for watercoloring 300 GSM or 4, 140 uh, pounds is the lightest paper I will use and the reason for that is because if it weighs less and if it's thinner then it boggles more and uh, you can get watercolor paper that is thinner but it it will boggle when you wet it and I use it at least on my base layers I use a lot of water so I really don't want to mess around with paper that is buggled a lot. I gone a little snobby. I say, okay, I to make life easier for myself, I pay more and have less problems. So I use 300 GSM paper, period. You can get heavier papers too. And the heavier it gets, the less it buggles and the easier it is to use. And it can also absorb more water which makes things even easier um, but from 300 DSM uh, the, the price goes up pretty steeply quite quickly so I currently don't have any heavyweight papers I have a couple of samples but that's it so yeah and, and what the weight is the explanation for the weight 300 GSM means 300 grams per square meter. So a, a square meter of this paper weighs 300 grams uh, in metrics. The 140 pounds is some slightly more odd thing, but it's 440 pounds per, and I think it's called a rem, and I have not really figured out how much that is. But 140 pounds is a lot, so I, I don't know if a rim is like a whole machine roll of paper or what it is. But it is some kind of square footage kind of measure. Um, so um, so that's what it is. That That's the, the kind of the technical thing. It is weight per square area. Uh, 
upper area surface of, of some kind. So, um, and it is really weight. If you if you compare different types of paper, even if it says the same weight on it, if you measure the thickness of it, the the physical thickness of the paper, then you would see sometimes that paper that weigh have the same weight isn't the same thickness, physical thickness. If you, if you go on look at that, you can get a an idea about the paper weight if you if you feel it and you flip it the this is probably a 90 gram paper and or nah, maybe maybe a hundred uh, and here's a a 300 compared but you can't always go by that because it also depends on how it's produced. And I'll get to that next. Um, so there's uh, three types of surface uh, that you can get in watercolor paper. It's called hot pressed, cold pressed, and, and the cold press is split up into either fine or rough. Yeah, there's always a rough, and there's, I think, sometimes even a very rough. But rough and fine cold press are the two most common ones. And the fine one is often also referred to as not. Um, and that's the smoothest of the, the two. Cold press paper has been, has not been warmed up in the process of making. They, what they do is they, they take these plant fibers and they mix it up in, in to a, like a dough batter like thing where they mix glue in glue and water into it and then now this is called mold made so they have kind of a frame that they put it into and um, which is a mesh of some sort and they put it in there they spread it out the, the paper pulp and cold press is then just left pretty much to dry then the hot press the the mold is smoother for one thing the the screen that you put it out onto is smoother and then it is at some stage in the production it is like ironed it's warmed up and, and compressed so so it's Actually, usually, if if you have a hot pressed paper, uh, 300 GSM, and you hold it up, especially to a rough paper, you can maybe s sense that the the hot pressed paper is thinner and feels thinner than the, than the rough paper, and the knot so is kind of in between. It's not very very much difference there is, but there's a little. And now why do we have three types of surface on our paper? Well, the hot press paper is good for what is called dry, wet on dry paintings, where you use, you let, you have the so dry surface and you use the wet paint on that. And that's good also, that method of painting is good for fine detail uh, paints. And uh, because the surface is smooth, you can really get your fine details and it doesn't get bumpy or you don't have any any places where it skips. You can get really fine uh, lines and details on that. The knot surface is a little more rough. There's a little more texture to it, but not a whole lot. You can get some detail on here without any problem. And I'm sorry, my... my camera flickers because there's too much white on the screen. Yeah, so so this is, has a little bit more texture and I really can't show the texture here. Um, but you can almost hear it when I rub it. Um, so this is for kind of an intermediate kind of thing. The cold press types are good for wet and wet where you either put a wash of paint on and then you add colors before it's really dry. 
or you wet the paper with water first and then you add paints afterwards. So you put your wet paint on an already wet surface. Um, and the knot surface is kind of good for medium, medium details. The rough surface or the very rough surface has a lot of bumps on it and it's, it is rough and the paper structure is a little more open too so it actually absorbs water quite well and um, so it holds on to the water and, and stays wet and rough paper is pretty much made for wet and wet techniques and where you have the colors bleed into each other and you don't really do any or not very much detail on it and the texture of the paper has lots of little dips and hills and stuff and the color tends to just go in pool a little bit into the dips of the paper so you get a little bit of an uneven surface um, and a finish where you can really see the texture of the paper and if you have granulating colors with where the, the, that set has sediments out, it is even more visible on, on a rough surface than on a, a hot press surface. So it's for different painting techniques and personal preferences and that kind of stuff. So um, that is that's kind of the, the three typical surfaces you, you get. But I will really, really recommend that you, you get samples of, of paper that you test out before you commit to buying watercolor paper. Um, or be prepared to, to buy different brands until you find one you like. Because um, if I got here a, that Langton paper, this is called a knot surface. So this should kind of be like a fine medium surface, but this knot paper is as rough as Sonda Waterford's rough paper. It is actually, I'd say, rougher than that. So, so you can't always, if if you know one brand, the surface of the similar named surface of another brand can be totally different. There's. I don't know if you can see, there's kind of a close-up shot of the surface here. So this looks like it's it's weaved. It has a little bit of a weave texture to it. And I'll show you. Uh, and where this is, it's also weaved, but it is harder to see, um, actually. So... And I have here, now this is a totally different kind of paper. This is a, a mixed media, but I can use it to show you the texture. You can see the texture of this. This looks almost like um, a canvas. Um, and I, I'm gonna, t when now I have got this paper out, I'm gonna talk about a different, um, kind of property you can find in watercolor paper and that is sizing other than the glue that they use to glue the the fibers together with you can get paper that has been sized and that means that it has had a surface treatment usually with gelatin or a gelatin like agent and what that does is it, it prevents the water or delays the water absorbing into the paper. And that is usually on student grade paper you will find sizing. Uh, if if the, some of them goes to extremes and they put it in the pulp of the paper as well. So then you get some paper that really doesn't absorb water well, if almost at all. There's a benefit to this and that's why they use it in student great paper and that is it is easy to to make corrections you sit here and you paint and you uh, you add maybe the background color starts to run into your subject 
or you, you make an oops where you're brushing you you just place the the color wrong or you use too much water or whatever and then you can just grab some paper or a sponge or something similar and you just mop it up and no harm done and you can just work on and you haven't stained the paper too much so corrections are and even if you have something that is dried and you go hmm I don't really quite like that it's and you just wet it and you mop it up again and you still haven't stained your paper too much and that's because the pigment sits on top of that gelatin surface the colors on on sized paper can look brighter than it does on on non-sized uh, paper but the drawback of the sizing is and I'll show you here you can actually see it now this has been done with water color um, markers like this one uh, so this is dye based uh, color but this uh, mixed media paper is actually heavily sized so and um, so we get some features that is special for sized paper and uh, it's getting worse when it's dye you can see here I left some pools of water here and it went really dark on this, the edge here um, I think there's different names for them I call them dark drying rims and that's because the color if there's too much water on the paper and it tends to be too much water in almost no matter what you do on on sized paper when it dries the the color collects around the the edge of that wet pool so you get these drying rims I used it as a feature here. I did it on purpose. I actually just left some water droplets there to, to get a background that is, uh, you see another one example up here. Um, and, and it can be difficult to make an even wash on, on, on sized paper. It can, it tends to be too light in some areas and too dark in some others. Now I used it as, as a feature here. Um, so so I'm cool with that but it, sometimes I don't want that effect and then it could be really difficult to make something smooth and nice like this I think I sat and did I don't know how many corrections of this until it dried the way I wanted it so uh, so if you have something like this happening when you do watercoloring you probably might want to try a different kind of paper so I think I've pretty much covered covered the the basics of of what cons what features you find in watercolor paper. So um, if you don't get the results you hope for, it's not necessarily your skill set that is wrong. It could be that the paper you use does not work well with what you how you work and what you expect of your work so uh, all proper good art stores can and will provide you with at least some paper samples of watercolor paper maybe not of all their brands but at least some and if you can't get samples I, I'll show you my, I have a binder here or not really here I got some paper samples here, that is uh, a sound of water for it this is the high white uh, hot press and I got a Moulin de Roy satin I got a Moulin de Roy from Kansan rough and I got some here from Bromley's art supplies I got a lot of those there's 26 different ones in there but I have used some of the, them and um, I'm looking to get a new set so I will I will do some comparisons and, and stuff later on but typically you will get a, a little piece like this and you can test it out with the methods you use most so really try around and yeah if you can't get a paper sample what I've done sometimes is I bought either postcard um, pads or a 
I in a five size uh, block of paper so that I can try it out and, and an A5 is usually payable and um, yeah so you can try it out and see if it's for you or, or if not be aware when you compare prices that there is a huge difference between especially if you buy it in, in blocks like this I buy blocks that are glued on all four sides. Sides. There's a, a little hole here where I can get a bone folder in and then take them off. You can also get them ring bound as mixed media, or you can get it where it's just glued at one side. I prefer them fully glued because often I paint on there. When it's fully glued, it doesn't bubble as much. Anyways, if you, if you buy them, I lost my <laughs> track here. If you buy a block or a pad of paper, there's a huge difference between how many sheets of paper is, is in there. Now this one was not very expensive, but there's also only 12 sheets on there. As opposed to this one, that has 20 sheets. So if you start, if, you, if they got about the same size, and you go, oh, this one cost half. Yeah, but there's also almost half, only half the, the amount of paper on the pad or on the block here. So that's actually really worth take, paying attention. I've seen them down to as much, little as five sheets uh, on a on a block. Um, and then, then it starts to be quite costly. I think I have covered pretty much all I can think of right now just and these are just the production things really try and try out because they are even even if it's a hundred percent hot pressed cotton paper same paper weight and everything they do not work the same if it's two different brands I have had this hot press and I've got this hot press, and they're totally different. They is 100% cotton. It's 300 GSM, and but this one is Fabriana, and one is a Saint Cuthbert's mill, and they're just miles apart in terms of how they they are to work on. I like them both very much, but it is just not the same paper. So there you have it. I will try and do some more paper comparisons and stuff. I I am waiting to get some paper samples home from different places and then we can talk about it again. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe and come back. Bye bye.